All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one without partners, the all-knowing, the all-wise. We bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And we bear witness that our noble and beloved Prophet Muhammad is his final prophet and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that he was sent as a mercy to the world. And that he guided us to every good and warned us of every harm and evil. And he left us on the straight path. I remind myself and all of you to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For taqwa is indeed the life of our hearts and the provision for the hereafter. وأنهاكم عن مخالفته يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا O you who believe have taqwa of Allah وقولوا قولا سديدا and speak the most telling true words يصلح لكم أعمالكم Allah will perfect your works ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم and forgive your sins وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whoso obeys Allah and his messenger, he definitely has won a might and dying triumph. أَمَّا بَعْدُ Dear brothers, dear sisters, today's topic is about a surah from the Qur'an. And this surah, is a surah that is well known to many of us. It's a surah that was revealed in the Medinan period, toward the latter part of the Medinan period. It was revealed in the ninth year of Hijrah. So along the same time as Surah Bara'a, Surah At-Tawbah, chapter nine in the Quran, it was revealed after the conquest of Mecca, after the opening of Mecca, it was revealed after Iza Ja'a Nasrullahi Wal Fatih, where many people entered Islam. It was revealed after Surah Al Mujadila. This Surah is Surah number 49 in the Holy Quran, Surah Al Hujurat, the Surah of the Inner Chambers. And it's a short Surah, it's about 18 verses. And this surah is composed of three parts, part one, part two, and part three. Today's khutbah is on part two, but the surah has a context. Part one talks about our relationships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our relationships with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in terms of honor, in terms of dignity, in terms of respect, in terms of obedience, in terms of the love that we have to show to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in terms of many other things. The second part of the surah talks about how we ought to treat one another, how to foster a community of believers, a community of believers where trust flows in that community. How to foster this community? First, how to create it. Then how to protect it. How to preserve it. And at the heart of this community, there is Iman, there is faith. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, innama al mu'minuna ikhwa. So the surah contains all you who believe, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, five times, in, a, in almost two pages, five times. The third part talks about what it means to be a believer. And as the introduction of that part, it also talks about how we should treat each other, not as believers, but as a larger community. 
how we treat fellow human beings and how fellow hu human beings should treat one another. We said, Ya ayyuha nasu, inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa unsa. And we made you into nations and tribes in order that you get to know one another. And you treat one another in light of that. But this surah has a context. And this context is relevant, very relevant. And is timely for Muslims at all times. The context is the ulama calls the surah the surah of mannerism, the surah of etiquettes, the surah of adab, the surah of akhlaq, character, and the surah of morality. The context is after the opening of Mecca, many people came into Islam. And all of a sudden, the Muslim population grew exponentially. So of course, in addition to the Muhajireen from Mecca and the Ansar from Medina, now we have all kinds of tribes, all kinds of new Muslims coming into the faith. So the Muslims found themselves in a situation where there is a lot of diversity amongst the community, especially after the opening of Mecca. People are coming from different backgrounds, different tribes, different clans, different customs, different ways of looking at things. And all of a sudden, they're becoming Muslims. But they don't know the etiquettes of Islam yet. Many of them are not familiar with the etiquettes of Islam yet. They're not familiar of this code of honor that Muslims have been living uh, and have been abiding uh, by for the last nine years in Medina. And at the same time, mistakes were made. And some of the mistakes were not just made by the new Muslims. They were also made by senior Muslims among the companions, or even junior Muslims among the companions, or even those in between. Because we're all mortals and we can make mistakes. So the surah was revealed within that context. Now it's timely to remind everyone, everyone of who we are. And Muslims, wherever you have a community of Muslims, they grow exponentially in no time, like mushrooms, like poosh, they expand. Where do they come from? Allahu A'lam. So this surah is like, it's like the restart button on your laptop. When you have too many windows open and things are starting to slow down and you don't know what's going on, it's good to restart your laptop and start fresh. All windows have to be closed. And the surah is setting now a set of rules and a set of etiquettes. And this surah is a test. At the heart of the surah, there is a test. This is the standards. These are the standards. And everyone has to measure themselves against those standards. Because there is a test. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ We claim to have taqwa. Oh, there is a test. God will test your hearts to see if you have, to what extent this taqwa is, to what degree this taqwa has taken hold of our hearts or not. We claim to be believers. Well, believers are mirrors of one another. So if we suspect one another, I'm seeing myself in them. This surah says a lot about us before it says about any other person. So the significance of the surah is that actually the Muslim community becomes a complex community, which is like MCC. It's like any Muslim community in California or America or Canada or Europe or even in the Muslim world, because now people are traveling from all over the place. In the UAE, in Dubai, same thing. 
But a question we should ask ourselves, what makes a community? Is it the number? We have 100,000 members in a community, or 1 billion or 2 billion people. Is it the sheer quantity that, that determines the strength of a community? Or is it the quality, i.e. the hearts are together? All the hearts are together. What's the benefit of having two billion people if the hearts are, are not together? So the first part talks about relationship. The second part talks about how we treat one another. And it gives us a set of rules. But it began, it begins with an interesting rule. And it's a rule, if we were to apply it, we can save ourselves 50% of headaches that might come later on. The second part of the surah begins, in ja'akum fasiqun binaba'in fatabayyanu. If a corrupt person, if a wicked person brings to you a news, verify it. It's a very simple rule. It says, don't believe everything you hear. In layman terms, the rule is saying, do not believe everything you hear. How simple can it be? Don't jump to conclusions. If we were to apply this in our life, in our individual life, family life, community life, societal, even at work, anywhere. Do not believe everything you hear. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. It says, in ja'akum fasikun binaba'in fatabayyun. It did not say reject it completely. It says, فَتَبَيَّنُوا And there is مَفْهُمُ الْمُخَالَفِ here, there is negative implication. And our ulama from this ayah and from other ayat, especially the scholars of hadith, the scholars of usul, the scholars of theology, have determined that the more serious the matter is, the strongest the evidence has to be. If something is very serious, we require stronger evidence. Something less serious, the evidence has to match the seriousness of the case under, under consideration. Don't jump to conclusions quickly. Verify things. And it could be as simple as listening to both parties. Or it could be more complex than that. And this area has a context. It has a context, but the, the area is more general than its context. So we say, Al-ibratu bi'umumi lafzi la bi khususi sabab. And the context is, the Prophet ﷺ sent a companion to collect something from Bani al-Mustaliq. So that companion by the name Al-Walid, he went to Bani al-Mustaliq. But before Islam, there was an animosity between this, this individual and that tribe. So when he arrived at Banu al-Mustaliq, everybody came out to receive him. Why? Because he is the envoy of the Prophet ﷺ. They came out to receive him and pay their respect to him. He, on the other hand, thought that they were coming out to kill him because of the animosity that existed before. So what did he do? He went back. He ran back to the Prophet ﷺ and made up a story that Banu al-Mustaliq are there, you know, are out to kill him, to kill the envoy of the Messenger of Allah. And things, things could have escalated. Jibreel ﷺ came down and told the Prophet ﷺ the real story. The next ayah 
talks about and what is an ayah? Imam Qurtubi says every ayah has properties. First, every ayah in the Quran, in it there is a ibra, in it there is a lesson, in it there is an example, in it there is a message. The second property, each ayah in the Quran, there is a blessing in it. And the third property, each ayah in the Quran, there is a warning in it. So as we read the ayat in the Quran, these are, it signifies something beyond the ayah. It signifies something beyond itself that it could not have been perceived without the ayah itself. So on its own, it's, it's not perceived. But because the ayah is there, we perceive it. So those that reflect on the Quran will see this, like the great Mufassirun. The next ayah talks about if two parties that in ta'ifatani min al-mu'minin aqtatalu fa aslihu baynahuma. When two parties fall into dispute, what are we supposed to do? What do our instincts tell us? Should we take sides? Is that what we should do? In ta'ifatani, and ta'ifa in the Arabic language could be at least one, at least one person. And firqa in the Arabic language is at least three people. So in the Quran it says, فَلَوْ نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ طَائِفَةٌ At least from every firqa there is a ta'ifa that goes and learns the religion in order to teach others. Not everyone has to learn, but at least enough. إِنْ طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Make aslah, make peace between them. Those are the peacemakers. The peacemakers don't take sides. Where are the peacemakers? In, in the New Testament, there is an, maybe an ayah or two about the peacemakers. Isa alayhi salam is attributed to him that he has said that the peacemakers, the peacemakers. The same thing here. This فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا is mentioned three times in this surah. Because to foster a community of believers, we have to come together and reconcile the hearts and heal the wounds. And then the ayah goes, the surah goes on to say, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Stating a fact that believers are but brothers. But in Arabic, we have another word for ikhwa. It's the word ikhwan. But the ayah did not say, innamal mu'minuna ikhwan. It says, innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. Both ikhwa and ikhwan are plural of akh. Akh, i.e. being a brother. But what's the difference between the akh, that the plural is ikhwan, and the akh that has a plural of ikhwa? The akh that has a plural of ikhwan is the akh that is your friend. Al-akh al-sadiq, al-akh al-rafiq, al-akh al-musanid, al-akh al-musaid, al-akh al-mu'awin, al-akh al-mu'azir. The friend that supports you, that helps you, that assists you. But the akh that has a plural of ikhwa is your brother from the same blood. The brother that from the same family. The brother that you have, you share the same father and mother. And if those people were to fight, it's like the fighting of siblings. And the ulama ask questions here, where does this ukhuwa come from? Like, what is the source of this brotherhood? Is it iman? Because what's the relationship between iman and ukhuwa? Is it a cause and effect relationship? And the Mufassirun will tell you, no, it's not. Ukhuwa is a fact even before Islam, because we are all brothers and sisters. 
because we're all children of Adam. We belong to the same family. So what's the role of Iman now? Iman is the umbrella under which Akhuwa will shine. Iman is the umbrella under which Akhuwa will be protected, will, be, will become bright, will manifest itself in the best way possible. And if Akhuwa is not manifested in the best way possible, we have to ask ourselves why. Why is it that Akhuwa, brotherhood, is not manifesting itself in the optimal way as the Quran is telling us? And if they were to have a dispute, our, our religious duty, because in the ayah, in the surah, it says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, all you who believe, whatever comes after Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu is a religious requirement. It's not optional. It's not optional that I can choose not to do it. No, in ja'a konfasikum binaba'in, fatabayyanu, it's a religious requirement. It's a religious duty. In It's a religious duty. And then the surah goes and talks about other rules. Very simple rules. Let not a group of men mock other group of men. And sukhriya in Arabic, it means أن يسخر الإنسان من أخيه الإنسان في شيء لا يستطيع تغييره. Sukhriya in Arabic means that you mark somebody in something that they cannot change. They have no control of. Like you mark them because of the color of their skin. You mark them because they're short. You mark them because the shape of their nose or the shape of their face or the shape of their body. If they can change it, it's called something else and falls under a different rule. But here they're talking about sukhriya, when you mark somebody in something that's outside their control, outside their qudra and irada. And it gives three more rules that don't have suspicion. Because suspicion might lead you to spying on, on your Muslim brother in order to confirm your suspicion. And once you confirm your suspicion, you start spreading the news. You start making riba, you start slandering, you start spreading the news either privately or publicly or whatever. This surah is a surah that is very good for individuals, families, communities, societies. And two parties could mean two people, two families, two brothers, two cousins, two mosques, two colleges, two... Um, um, scholars do anything, anything. We're all prone to make mistakes. But there is always room for improvement and there is always room for reconciliation.